All right, here we go. The book starts out with a dedication in memory of Addie Mae Collins, born 4-1849, died 4-1563. Denise McNair, born 11-1751, died 9-1563. Carol Robertson, born 4-2449, died 9-1563. And Cynthia Wesley, born 4-3049, died 9-1563. It's interesting, all of these people died on the same day and it says the toll for one day in one city that's interesting that they say it's a toll all those girls sounded really young also here we go page one and you wonder why we get called the weird watsons it was one of those super duper cold saturdays one of those kinds of days when that when you breathed out your breath kind of hung frozen in the air like a hunk of smoke and you could walk along and look exactly like a train blowing out big, fat, white puffs. It was so cold that if you were stupid enough to go outside, your eyes would automatically blink a thousand times all by themselves, probably so the juice inside of them wouldn't freeze up. It was so cold that if you spit, the slob would be an ice cube before it hit the ground. It was about a zillion degrees below zero. It was even cold inside our house. We put sweaters and hats and scarves and three pairs of socks on and still were cold. The thermostat was turned all the way up and the furnace was banging and sounding like it was about to blow up, but it still felt like Jack Frost had moved in with us. All of my family sat real close together on the couch under a blanket. Dad said this would generate a Eat. little, but he didn't have to tell us this. It seemed like the cold automatically made us want to get together and huddle up. My little, little sister, Joetta, sat in the middle, and all you could see were her eyes because she had a scarf wrapped around her head. I was next to her, and on the outside was my mother. Mama was the only one who wasn't born in Flint, so the cold was the coldest to her. All you could see were her eyes, too, and they were shooting bad looks at Dad. She always blamed him for bringing her all the way from Alabama to Michigan, a state she called a giant icebox. Dad was bundled up on the other side of Joey, trying to look at anything but Mama. Next to Dad, sitting with a little space between them, was my older brother, Byron. Byron had just turned 13, so he was officially a teenage juvenile delinquent and didn't think it was cool to touch anybody or let anyone touch him, even if it meant he froze to death. Byron had tucked the blanket between him and Dad down into the cushion of the couch to make sure he couldn't be touched. Dad turned on the TV to try to make us forget how cold we were, but all that did was get him in trouble. There was a special news report on Channel 12 telling about how bad the weather was, and Dad groaned when the guy said, If you think it's cold now, wait until tonight. The temperature is expected to drop into record low territory, possibly reaching the negative 20s. In fact, we won't be seeing anything above zero for the next four to five days. He was smiling when he said that, but none of the Watson family thought it was funny. We all looked over at Dad. He just shook his head and pulled the blanket over his eyes. Then the guy on TV said, Here's a little something we can use to brighten our spirits and give us some hope for the future. The temperature in Atlanta, Georgia is forecast to reach. Dad coughed real loud and jumped off the couch to turn the TV off, but we all heard the weatherman say, The mid-70s! The guy might as well have tied Dad to a tree and said, Ready, aim, fire. Atlanta, Mama said. That's 150 miles from home. Well, Lona, Dad said, I knew it, Mama said. I knew I should have listened to Moses Henderson. Who? I asked. Dad said, Oh, Lord, not that sorry story. you got to let me tell about what happened with him. Mama said, There's not a whole lot to tell. Just a story about a young girl who made a bad choice. But if you do tell it, make sure you get all the facts right. We all huddled as close as we could get because we knew Dad was going to try to make us forget about being cold by cutting up. Me and Joey started smiling right away, and Byron tried to look cool and bored. Kids, Dad said, I almost wasn't your father. You guys came real close to having a clown for a daddy named Hamborn Henderson. Daniel Watson, you stop right there. Who started You're... that ham blown nonsense? Before you started that, everyone called him a Christian name, Moses. And he was a respectable boy, too. He wasn't a clown at all. But the name stuck, didn't it, Hambone Henderson? Me and your granddaddy called him that because the boy had a head shaped just like a ham bone. Had more knots and bumps on his head than a dinosaur. 
So as you guys sit here giving me these dirty looks because it's a little chilly outside, ask yourselves if you'd rather be a little cool or go through life being known as the ham bonnets. Me and Joey cracked up. Byron kind of chuckled, and Mama put her hand over her mouth. She did this whenever she was going to give a smile because she had a great big gap between her front teeth. If Mama thought something was funny, first you'd see her trying to keep her lips together to hide the gap. Then, if the smile got to be too strong, you'd see the gap for a hot second before Mama's hand would come up to cover it, then she'd crack up too. Laughing only encouraged Dad to cut it more, so when he saw the whole family thinking it was funny, he really started putting on a show. He stood in front of the TV. Yep, Hambone Henderson proposed to your mother around the same time I did. Fought dirty, too. Told your mama a pack of lies about me, and when she didn't believe them, he told her a pack of lies about Flint. Dad started talking Southern style, imitating this Hambone guy. Well, Ona, I heard tell about the weather up that far north in Flint, Michigan. Heard it's colder than inside a icebox. Seen a movie about it. Think it was made in Flint. Movie called Nanook of the North. Yep, do believe for sure it was made in Flint. Mm Mm-hmm. Flint, Michigan. Folks, they're living these things called igloos. According to what I seen in this here movie, most of the folks in Flint is Chinese. Don't believe I seen none one colored person in the whole dang city. You a Bama grail. Don't believe you'd be too happy living in no igloo. Ain't got nothing against him, but don't believe you'd be too happy living amongst a whole slew of Chinese folks. Don't believe you'd like the food. Only thing them Chinese folks in that movie ate was whales and seals. Don't believe you'd like no whale meat. Don't taste a lick like chicken. Don't taste like pork at all. Mama pulled her hand away from her mouth. Daniel Watson, you are one lying man. One thing you said was true was the being in Flint is like living in an igloo. I knew I should have listened to Moses. Maybe these babies might have been born with lumpy heads, but at least they'd have had a warm lumpy heads. You know Birmingham is a good place, and I don't mean just the weather either. The life is slower, the people are friendlier. Oh, yeah, Dad interrupted. They're a real laugh a minute down there. Let's see, where was that? Colored's only bathroom downtown? Daniel, you know what I mean. Things aren't But people are more honest about the way they feel. She took her mean eyes off Dad and put them on Byron. And folks there do know how to respect their parents. Byron rolled his eyes like he didn't care. All he did was tuck the blanket further into the couch's cushion. Dad didn't like the direction the conversation was going, so he called the landlord for the hundredth time. The phone was still busy. The snake in the grass has got his phone off the hook. Well, it's going to be too cold to stay here tonight. Let me call Sydney. She just had that new furnace put in. Maybe we can spend the night down there. Aunt Sydney was kind of mean, but her house was always warm, so we kept our fingers crossed that she was home. Everyone, even Byron, chill, cheered when Dad got Aunt Sydney, and t- she told us to hurry over before we froze to death. All right, that's where we're going to pause for now, and we're going to do this model journal entry. So I'm going to show you how to do this, and in the future you'll be doing this yourself. So we start with our study questions. These always need to be answered in complete sentences. Number one. What interesting language does the author use to describe how cold it is in Flint? Now, if I go back, I remember that there were a lot of similes and metaphors. So this would be figurative language. So I would say the author uses figurative language to describe the cold in Flint. Okay. And then number two, how does Hambone Henderson try to discourage Walona from marrying Mr. Watson? What do you think Mr. Watson thinks of Hambone? How can you tell? Now this is going to be a longer answer. I'm going to write it. Give me one second. All right, so I said Hambone talks about how cold it is in Flint. Mr. Watson clearly doesn't like Hambone because all he does is make fun of him. These answers would score me an A on the study question part of this journal because they are in complete sentences and they correctly answer the question. Make sure that you have these sentences correct and then we're going to move on to quote from the chapter. Now for the quote from the chapter, we want to choose something that really stands out to us. This doesn't have to be something that is a quote, like something that somebody said. It has to be something that really stood out to you. 
Now, the part that stood out to me was on page five, where it said, let's see, where was that? Colored's bathroom, Colored's only bathroom downtown? That was on page five. I'm going to write that quote on my line and include the quotation marks and the page number. You should Here's do the same. Quote. Let's see, where was that? Colored's only bathroom downtown. And then I put the page number, page five. Notice that I also included the quotation marks. Now, this isn't all that we do with our quote. We need to go back to the reading process sentence starters, and we're going to use one of these frames to respond to our question. So I might say that I could make a connection. Right here I see, this section makes me think about blank because blank. For me, this section makes me think about the lesson that we did on assertions because we did a lot of work talking about segregation. So I'm going to write that response on All right, line. so I wrote, this section makes me think about our lesson on assertions. During this lesson, we learned a lot about segregation in the South. This helps me to better understand the setting of the story. I know when and where the story took place and why it was important. Please make sure that you write down this model entry. I want you to write the model so that you have an example of what a really great response looks and sounds like. Go ahead and copy it, pause if you need to. The next thing that I want to do is go to the journal entry scoring sheet. I wrote the date. Today is 11-13. We did chapter one. And my score is a check. I said it's a check because it was a good response, but it didn't go above and beyond. I leave the teacher check blank because that's where the teacher will give me my score. Go ahead and write down the score for this model entry. When you're done, you can move The on. very last thing I want you to do is back on the page with the exit slip. It asks you to look in your dialectical journal and write down a sentence starter for each of the following categories. So for example, I would look in the predicting section of the dialectical journal and I would write down one of the sentence starters from that section. Then I'd look in the questioning and I'd write down a sentence starter from there. All the way until I get to responding. When I'm done with this, I can continue to read the Watsons Go to Birmingham after I've made sure that I've been ready to turn in this assignment. That's it for today. Good job on your work.